we now are concluding our second installation of Open Streets. Um, it was two years of advocacy and, and raising public awareness and planning for this event. Um, I would say that's been largely successful. Our first uh, weekend we had 20,000 people out with very little publicity because we didn't get a promotional package uh, or budget. And, uh, and this year, this time around, we've actually now probably had double the numbers, easily double the numbers. What I'm hearing from participants is that number one, they absolutely love the event. They recognize that it's all about physical health and uh, making people happier in, in, in their city. And, uh, and the feedback we've received so far is that you have to have it more frequently, the route must be longer, and you have to extend the hours into the afternoon. Uh, the businesses that opened earlier, I could tell that they were much busier, uh, largely because we didn't um, we didn't populate the streets with vendors. There's no third-party competition. It really is about improving the civic dialogue of our city, uh, giving families an opportunity to get active and and, uh, and engage in physical activity that's all free. And uh, of course, what's really most important to me is that we showcase the very best of our neighborhoods, and the city comes alive on a Sunday morning, and it's just it's beautiful. So two years of advocacy. Two, uh, two Sundays of pilot projects. Eight hours. <laughs> Eight hours. Uh, next step? Uh, next step is that we were going to evaluate um, the performance of the program. Ryerson University is one of our significant partners and they put together a third party independent survey for us. And so for those who want to see more of the Open Streets or have any feedback for us, uh, they're welcome to visit openstreetsto.org. The survey is there and we'd love to hear from you. We want to know how, what can we do to make the program that much better, uh, what can we do to, um, uh, to expand it, and are there any big changes that you want us to, to do. We're all going to be taking that into consideration. We'll evaluate the performance and then we'll report back out and let people know what, what you said, just basically mirroring what you said, and uh, we'll let you know what we're hoping to do next year. As a city of this size uh, at this time in history, we're late in the game, if you will, to having open streets or Ciclovia in Spanish. Yes. And uh, why is that? Well, you're absolutely right. We're, we're, Toronto is not an early adapter of the open streets program. Uh, I would say that we're a little bit late to the party. There's over 100 initiatives around the globe, and uh, in some of the biggest North American cities, they have very successful uh, programs, and it becomes part of the urban fabric of, of the excitement of living in a big city. Um, so even though we are late to the to the party, I would say that because we have the best city and the best neighborhoods, we can actually host and create the world's best open streets program. Because when you have streets as iconic as Bloor Street and Young Street um, being the backdrop of the Open Streets Toronto program, uh, you cannot fail. Like literally, we have the best program. Um, and we, the program will continue to expand, and I know that the program will continue to improve uh, with the support of the local residents and the businesses. I think we're going to get there. Okay, now separately, uh, we need to get you back to City Hall and for Open Streets to continue because this was primarily your ward uh, to begin with and it needs to go citywide and we need to have uh, the champion uh, back at City Hall. How can people learn a little bit more about your campaign? For my campaign, um, obviously I'm standing for re-election, you can go visit my website, it's www.kristinlongtam.ca. Uh, there's all sorts of things that you can learn about my platform and policy. Uh, open streets and, uh, and high urbanism is really part of what I'd like to do. Uh, high urbanism, people may not know this sure. word. So I want to make sure that the city, our parks and our streets are, are here to serve a higher purpose. So it's much more than just density for the sake of density, but it's actually building uh, cities for people. And, uh, and that's been a core fundamental uh, platform of my campaign since 2010 and now to moving to 2014. And uh, if, you, if you've enjoyed the, what we've done, with, which includes the, the Celebrate Young program, the Church Street Park Flood program, and now Open Streets, every single year, uh, starting from 2011, I've launched something different. And I can assure you that uh, something else up my sleeves in 2015 is going to completely um, be extraordinary. It actually is very, very big very ambitious and it runs from the waterfront to Davenport. Uh, you have to wait to see for that one. So we actually have to elect you again to well, see that happen. I, I will mention it throughout the campaign, but uh, it really is about aspiring to be more than what we are today. And I think that Toronto is on the cusp of something that's fantastic. So there is a cultural renaissance, there's a park renaissance. The more investments that we make in our local cities, in our local neighborhoods, means that we are able to enhance the quality of life for their residents. And we make it a city that's family friendly, that's clean and that's affordable, that where no one gets left behind. And that's the city that I want to live in. It's the city I think a lot of people would like to live in. Thank you very much. Thanks so. Thank you.